What is up everybody? Welcome to the second Kodos Crash Course video. This is for um, week 8, Attila the Hun. Um, there's not going to be any music in this episode. Uh, I got some complaints about it. So yeah, this is just going to be me talking. Uh, if you want the music back, just put it in the comments or something. And also remember, uh, do not use this as your only form of studying. Study your own notes because I'm not going to have everything on here and I'll probably mess up. So yeah, be sure to look along with your own notes or something. Also, um, for the vocabulary test that we're having this week, in the description there is a Quizlet deck for the vocabulary test. I'm pretty sure it has all the words from weeks 6, 7, 8, and also all the words from the previous two tests. So you should be able to use it as a study reference. And then for the people you should know test, um, there should be a Quizlet for it next week. Alright, so let's get into Attila the Hun. Uh, so we've been covering the Roman Empire a lot the past couple weeks, and by now it's starting to begin its fall. And there are many factors to this. Um, one of the main reasons Rome is beginning to fall is because that it paid a lot of soldiers and all of its countries with gold. It doesn't sound like a bad idea to pay people with gold, because I mean, hey, it's gold, who doesn't want gold? But they were starting to run out of gold, so yeah, that was starting to become a problem. And then another problem that I was beginning is that they were starting to get invaded by barbarians. Rawr, barbarians! <laughs> the borders of the Roman Empire were starting to get breached by barbarians, including the Huns, the Visigoths, and the Vandals. And if you look on the screen right now, um, there is an invasion route chart of a bunch of the different barbarians. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the map that Dr. T used, but I don't know for sure, but it looks a lot like it. So yeah, this may or may not be the one he actually used, but it still is a nice reference what, either way. So the first group of barbarians is the Visigoths. They are also known as the Western Goths. They sacked the Roman Empire in the year 410, and the Visigoths were told by their Eastern Roman Emperor that they would be protected by them. But when the next Eastern Emperor showed up, he said, no, you're not going to get protected. So that kind of made the Visigoths mad, which is why they invaded in the first place. Another Another interesting thing about the Visigoths is that they were actually mainly Christians. Um, they desired freedom and they had respect for women and they uh, were the source of chivalry and romance, which all you people who are reading uh, certain Gawain, yes, yeah, Sir Gawain, I always called him Gawain. <laughs> so yeah, Sir Gawain, all the chivalry and romance stuff we're learning about, this originated with them, so kind of a cool connection there. And so also raiding Rome at the time were the Vandals, and uh, why were they doing it? They were just doing it for fun. I don't know, like a bunch of guys got together one day and said, Hey, wouldn't it be fun if we raided Rome and like stole other stuff? And they're like, yeah! And so yeah, um, that was how the Vandals did it, Um, and they also are the root of the word Vandalism. And now the main barbarian group that we're talking about are the Huns, because you know, it's a Attila the Hun. So yeah. The Huns ruined the splendor of the Roman Empire, and they were skilled in the art of horseback. They did everything on horseback. They ate, they slept, they fought. Yeah, they did everything on horseback. Everything. Um, they had over 500,000 trained men on horseback. So yeah, that's a lot of horses and a lot of men who know how to ride those horses. And they were also masters of the bow and arrow and could do shots from 300 yards away. Now, 300 yards away sounds crazy. A Dr. T was giving the example of a guy named... Lajos Kasai, um, Dr. She talked about him in class. Um, I'm putting a link to his uh, YouTube channel in the description. He does a lot of cool stuff with bow and arrow. Now, the Hun army screamed and shouted whenever they came into battle, and they used their bow and arrows from afar and their nets up close whenever they were in a battle. And the leader of the Huns was Attila the Hun, main character this week. He lived from 406 to 453. He was ambitious, aggressive, and arrogant. He was called the Scrooge of God, and he originally worked with his brother, Bleda. Now, Theodosius II, who was the Eastern Roman Emperor, who was born in 408, he paid Attila and Bleda 2,100 pounds of gold a year to stay away from him in his kingdom. And now, for Attila and Bleda, they're like, oh, yeah, you're going to pay us gold. Sure, we won't attack you. But um, it wasn't so hot of a deal for Theodosius II, so he tried to get rid of him. And he plotted to kill Attila in year 445, but the plot failed, and now Attila was mad because the Theodosius II just tried to kill him. So now Attila is coming after Theodosius II. Meanwhile, Attila kills his brother Bleda in 445, so he can be the sole ruler of the Huns. So, and he kind of took a cue from the story of how Rome was founded, you know, with the two brothers, one killed the other, and bam, there's Rome. <laughs> Later in 450, Theodosius II falls off of his horse and dies. It was not a murder, he just fell off his horse. Um, apparently he was not good at riding horses. So yeah, Attila can stop his pursuit there. And then Marcin becomes the new Eastern Roman Emperor after Theodosius II. Uh, he refuses to pay gold to Attila like Theodosius II once did, but Attila ignores this and decides to go attack the Western Roman Empire. Now you might think, why would he do that? Well, guess what was in the Western Roman Empire? 
There was a cute lady. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, in the Western Roman Empire, um, Emperor Valentinian the Third, who lived from 419 to 455, locked up his older sister Honoria, so she couldn't take the throne since she was the older one. She kind of could. Um, she was smart and beautiful, good combination. And Valentinian the Third played to use her as a tool for trading. So, like, I don't know. I guess, hey. Will you give me, I don't know, a million pieces of gold for my sister? Like, yeah, he was just going to use her, like, to trade, like, as a bargaining chip. And I don't think she really liked that idea. Um, but basically, yeah, he had Honoria locked up, and he hired a guard to keep Honoria locked up, basically make sure she didn't go anywhere. But that didn't really work out, because eventually Honoria got pregnant through that guy. And so Valentinian III killed him for that. Um, yeah, that was a bad guard. Uh... So Valentinian III had been emperor since he was six years old, and a man named Aetus was acting as his protector during that time, and still was even when he became emperor, and also did most of the work, because Valentinian III was really just a playboy, kind of like Tony Stark if he was the emperor. Eventually, Valentinian III arranged for Anuia to marry a guy named Bassus Herculanus, not Hercules, Herculanus, and he was a chief senator. Now, Honoria didn't want to get married to that guy, so she sends a letter to Attila the Hun for help, and she promises half the gold of the Western Roman Empire to him if he will save her. Now, this may have not been a good idea, one, because, you know, he was Attila the Hun, and second, Attila basically read the letter and says, So, Honoria wants to marry me? Ooh, alright, I'll go save the pretty lady. So, yeah, um, Attila goes there thinking that he's about to marry this girl, but I don't, that was not her intent at all. She just wanted someone to come save her. But, I mean, there's also the gold, so, I mean, gold and a girl isn't a bad combination. <laughs> so, yeah, Attila sends the courtier that delivered the message back to her, saying that he's coming, and, uh, when Valentinian III hears about this, I think he intercepts the courtier or something, uh, he heavily interrogates this guy because, you know, the courtier just ran to Attila the Hun, and then he kills him. Uh, Valentinian III's killing a lot of people, ooh. <laughs> uh, despite the efforts of Honoria and Attila, the marriage between Honoria and Bassus Heraclanus happens, and no word of her is ever heard again. So yeah, basically she disappears. And I'm pretty sure, yeah, Attila didn't even make it. I think uh, the wedding happened before he actually was able to arrive. Because when he did arrive, the Battle of Shalons happens. And this is 451. Um, it was the Western Roman Empire versus the Huns. The Huns scorched the ground in their path and they burned four whole cities. And that was just on the way to the battle. But they spared Paris for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe they thought the Eiffel Tower was pretty. And so Aetus led the Western Roman army into battle. Uh, if you remember, he was the protector of Valentinian III. He was also general. Um, he had been a hostage of the Huns when he was 14 years old, and he actually was a friend of Attila back when that happened, so it was kind of old friends battling each other. Um, and he also learned many of their battle tactics during this time, so Aetius was very familiar with their battle tactics due to him being a hostage. And so Aetius also allied with the Visigoths, if you remember they were a barbarian tribe in this battle, and he teamed up with the Visigoth king Theodoric and his son Therismund, and the Visigoths feared the Huns too, because, you know, the Huns were pretty bad, and, I don't know, if barbarians started, decided to fight each other, or the Visigoths could be in trouble. So yeah, it was a win-win uh, a for them. And then, at the Battle of Shalons, over 300,000 people were killed. Mainly Huns, actually, it became the first loss of Attila, and he was preparing to burn himself and his family rather than being captured. But Aetus let him go free instead. We really don't know why he just let him go free, because, I mean, Attila's right there. Go ahead and kill him, because, like, he's such a big menace. But maybe it was because they used to be friends? I don't know. But whatever happened, it ended up being the last victory of Rome after this. Rome just went downhill. So during the battle, Theodoric, who was the Visigoth king, got shot by an arrow through the chest and he died. And Aetus actually told Theodoric, during the middle of the battle, to leave and go claim the throne before any of his brothers did. And Aetus actually did have some motive for that, because if uh, Theodoric became king of the Visigoths, he would actually have an ally in the Visigoths, and so he could, like, get help from them in the future. So this was a smart move for Aetus, even though, you know, Theodoric left the middle of the fight. So the next year, in 452, Attila had basically recuperated, and he was ready to go attack Rome again, you know, for revenge of that awful defeat that he had last time. But, um, they sent a guy named Pope Leo I out to Attila, the Western Roman Empire, um, they met together, and they didn't fight each other, um, so we really don't know what happened when Pope Leo I and Attila met up, but whatever happened, it made Attila leave, like he stopped his attack because of whatever the Pope said to him. 
All right, and the next year, 453, Attila was at home celebrating because he was getting married. Yay! He was getting married to Ildiko, and she was a German woman, so I guess that explains the weird name. Uh, and yeah, they were having a good time at this wedding. You know, Attila, after losing so many battles, is kind of happy to have like a like a victory for once in his personal life. And everyone got drunk at the wedding, and uh, I don't I don't think that's fun <laughs> because the next morning Attila was dead. <laughs> um. Yeah, so um, after everyone got drunk, they found Attila dead in the morning, and it was because of a nosebleed. I think he like choked on the nosebleed or something, like suffocated. I don't remember for sure. You'll have to you'll have to let me know in the comments if you have that written down. It was something nosebleed. So yeah, that's the end of Attila. And now we go back to Valentinian the Third, if you remember Honorius' brother. So there's a sinner named Petronius Maximus. That's a catchy name. Uh, he was out to kill Valentinian the Third and become the new emperor of Rome because like everyone wants to be the emperor of Rome, right? The first to kill Valentinian, he would need to get through Aetis, because if you remember, he's like his protector. He's always watching out for him. So if Aetis was gone, then Valentinian would be open. So he teams up with Valentinian's eunuch and tries to trick Valentinian into thinking that Aetis was trying to kill him. <laughs> so um, it worked. So Valentinian was tricked by the person out to kill him that Aetis was out to kill him. So, I don't know, that seems kind of a weird idea, but it worked, apparently. And so, Valentinian III met up with Aetis and killed him. Uh, Valentinian III, three kills on him. <laughs> now that Aetis was gone, Petronius Maximus could go after Valentinian III, and he finds two soldiers that were loyal to Aetis, who just died, and bribes them to kill Valentinian for revenge, because, you know, if these soldiers were loyal to Aetis... They kind of would want to go kill Valentinian because of the fact that uh, Aetis was killed by Valentinian. And so they did it. While Valentinian was practicing horseback one day in 455, the soldiers killed him. A lot of deaths by horseback in this story. Why, why is riding on a horse so dangerous? <laughs> um, Petronius Maximus becomes the new Western Roman Emperor basically because he bribed the Senate to vote him in. And to help keep peace... He marries Valentinian III's widow, which actually probably wasn't a good idea because the widow didn't like the prospect at all. And she sent a letter to the barbaric vandals for help, if you remember, they're the ones that just uh, raided Rome for fun. She was originally promised to marry their king years ago, and so the vandals were kind of like, I guess, hey, we want her back. And I mean, they sent a letter too, so maybe they had the same thing as Attila, like, yeah, if we go save the lady, we're gonna get married to her. So yeah, the vandals go and sack Rome. And uh, this was 11 weeks after Petronius Maximus had become the emperor. Everyone fled the city. Even Petronius Maximus tried to flee. He disguised himself as like a normal citizen and tried to blend in. But some soldiers recognized him and killed him. Maybe because they thought it was disrespectful for the emperor to like go run away. I'm not sure. It wasn't Vandals who killed him from what I've got. If it was Vandals who killed him, please let me know and I will, I'll make a note about that. Um, so yeah. The Western Roman Empire, after all this madness, eventually falls in 476, which is a big date. Dr. T emphasizes this one a lot. The Western Roman Empire fell in 476. That will probably be a question on the quiz. I would be shocked if it wasn't. So yeah, that's the end. This is a longer video, I think, than the last one. But, I mean, there was just so much stuff to go over, you know? If you're wondering about the uh, Rhine River, because the Rhine River was one of the words on the board, uh, you do not need to know anything about the Rhine River. Dr. T said in class, just to ignore it. So yeah, Rhine River, just cross that out in your notes. So yeah, this is the end. Uh, I want to say thank you guys so much for the support you guys have been giving me. Uh, first week, we got like 150 views on the video. I'm glad you guys are actually enjoying this because like, yeah, that was the whole purpose of this. Um, if there's demand, I'll supply. So it seems like there's demand right now. So yeah, I'm going to keep doing these. Uh, so yeah, and also the new logo design on the videos and that's by Ben Province. So yeah, good job, Ben. And if you have any questions about the video, please let me know on the YouTube channel, not the Instagram. I do not actually run the uh, Instagram channel. If you have any questions about the lecture and like what I've been talking about, please let me know on the YouTube comments. And so yeah, remember to use your own notes too for studying. Uh, this is not the only way you should be studying. And that's it. See you guys next week.